Hey everyone and welcome back to the Let's Learn Python series. I'm Allie and this week I'll be walking you through the different components of a script as well as creating a new program. Let's jump in! Before we begin, I want to note that for the rest of the course I'll be working within a Linux environment. If you're using a Windows environment, just remember that in PowerShell you want to only type Python, not Python 3.6. If you don't already have your lab set up, you'll want to do that before proceeding. Check out the first episode of the series where we walk you through setting up. Now, on to progress. Let's take a look at the script we made at the end of the last episode. For those of you who don't know, the Hello World script is typically the first script you will create when learning a new programming language. The script simply instructs the terminal to read whatever message you tell it to. Let's run it one more time to see the script run. So, both hello world and literally anything else was printed out. This is because that what we had indicated in our script to be the string that is printed out. A string is a sequence of characters, in this case words, that we want the computer to print out. In other words, anything we put between these quotes here will be printed by the terminal. For example, if I change it to say, hello, my name is Ali, and change the other line to say, how are you today? We can save the file, and I can run it again to see the reflected changes. Now let's further edit the script to add comments. Above the first line, create a new line and insert the pound symbol, or the hashtag symbol if that's what you prefer to call it. Following that, just type, this is a comment. Comments are used in programming to help organize and explain what the heck your script is doing. While it may seem silly to explain such small parts of your script, in the future, you'll be making scripts that are way longer and more advanced than this. Any programmer will tell you that comments save you a ton of time in the long run. The hash symbol we have used indicates to the computer that whatever follows it should be ignored. Let's add a comment in between the other two lines. And let's add one to the end of the last line. Take a moment to run your program. When we do, we find that the terminal just writes the same message as before. None of what we commented will be listed. A huge topic to understand in programming is the use of variables. A variable is used to store the value of something. There are two parts to a variable, naming the variable and assigning its value. Let's update our hello script to demonstrate this. Above the first line, add x equals quotations and then your name. I'm going to put my name, but feel free to use your own name. We want our first line to print hello, my name is, adding a space before the closing quote. Then, before the parentheses, add a plus sign and x. Now save your script and let's run it. We see that the program used our string variable, Ally, because we indicated to it that the value of x is Ally. So if we go back to our script and add a variable y, and let's say we set it to the value of John. We change the next line to say plus y instead of plus x. It's going to print out that value instead. Furthermore, you can name variables all sorts of ways. Naming conventions differs between programmers, but there are two rules you should follow. One, be descriptive. The variable should reflect the data that you are using. For example, I would name this variable name or my name or my underscore name. Naming it something like x can make it confusing when reading through the code later. Two, you need to be consistent. Whether you're using camel case, underscores, or any other type of formatting, you need to use the same method throughout your script. This is not only for readability, but it just makes sense. Let's add some more variables to our script. Let's add a variable called programming language and set the value of the string to Python. Then let's comment on our old line and create a new one. This time we will be embedding our values into our string. We use the F in front of the quotations to indicate that this string needs to be formatted with the variables that we have supplied. Now that we've entered that, let's save and run the script. And voila, we have our string embedded with our variables. Now, we're going to learn how to deal with numbers and math. Create a new file and name it calculator.py. Follow along as we create some variables. My name equals Allie, or you could do your own name. 
my age equals 23. Well, put your own age if you want. Days per year equals 365. Probably want to keep this the same. Hours per day equals 24. Minutes per hour equals 60. Seconds per minute equals 60. Let's do some calculation based on these numbers. We know that we can find an approximate of how many days we have lived by multiplying our age by the number of days in a year. So we'll create a new variable called days lived and create the equation, but instead of using the numbers themselves, we can just use our variables. Days lived equals my age times days per year. Now that we have the value for days lived, we can calculate how many hours that works out to by multiplying its number by hours in a day. So hours lived equals days lived time hours per day. And by repeating this process, we can get the same values for minutes lived and seconds lived. So let's enter those in now. Minutes lived equals hours lived times minutes per hour and seconds lived equals minutes lived times seconds per minute. Whew, that's a lot. Now we have our calculations, so let's have the terminal spit us out the results. I'm going to break this into two parts. So we're going to do one that's print hello and gives you how many days, and the other one I want to tell us how many hours, minutes, and seconds. Let's save and run our program to see how it looks. And it's given us a breakdown of our lives. Lovely. So what if we want the program to ask you for your name and age? That way it can calculate anyone's time breakdown. Before we get to that, we have to go over something extremely important when it comes to programming. Earlier we discussed what a string was. It's important to also know that a string is what's called a data type. In programming, there are several different data types. Here's a quick overview of the different types of data types and what their limits are, but don't worry about that. For right now, let's just focus on strings, integers, and floating points. Integers are whole numbers, and floating point numbers, float for short, can best be explained as numbers with decimals. For example, say you have $10, you have an integer. 10 is a whole number. But if you have $10.99, well now you're dealing with change, so it becomes a float. This is important in the script we have because when we're asking a user for input, they're going to be giving us a string by default. In your calculator script, let's create a prompt that asks the user for their name. Print, what's your name? Then we need to remove the string as the value, which was Allie, from the variable and instead indicate that we want the computer to take input from the user. To do this, we type input parentheses. Let's run the script and see how it looks. So it's asking us for my name. I enter my name and it spits out the information. Let's make one little change to the prompt for the user's name. Just add a comma after the quotation and add end equals single quotation, single quotation. This will tell it not to create a new line after the prompt. This is usually done for readability. Run the script to see the difference. So, so far we see that it takes any name as a string and uses it as the value for the name variable. But what happens when you do this when asking for the age of the user? Let's prompt them to enter their age. We'll just have it print, how old are you? 
and change the value and variable my age to input. Let's run the script. It asks us for our name and asks us for our age, but when we enter our age, it goes pretty wonky. Press Ctrl plus C to stop the program from running. So this is happening because the program is trying to do our calculations using its string instead of an integer. Think about it like this. Ask someone to multiply three by purple. You can't because those two things are very different. That's exactly what's happening here. We're attempting to multiply two different data types and the program doesn't know how to respond. To fix this, we just have to indicate to the program that we want input from the user to be treated as an integer. And all you have to do for that is put in, in front of it and put it in parentheses. Now let's run our script and see if it likes that better. Great, so now we can see the input of any name or age and it'll calculate it for us. Now, this is the Learn Cybersecurity channel, so I'd be doing all of you a great disservice if I didn't address arbitrary input. This is input that a user uses that is not what the program is expecting. For example, the program wouldn't know what to do if the user typed out the word 23 instead of using its number form. In future episodes, we will look at sanitizing the input, so don't worry about that for right now. Right now, we know that the program works as it is intended to be. And don't forget to add comments into your script explaining what you're intending your code to do. The amount of detail you want to add in your comments is up to you, but do yourself a huge favor and get into the habit of commenting now. Alright, and that wraps up this episode. If you have any questions or if you're starting to struggle with some of the concepts that we're covering, don't give up. The process of learning to code comes with a lot of errors and troubleshooting. If you have questions, feel free to post them in the comments below, or for a faster response time, join our Discord and ask your question there. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and until next week, I'll see you next video.